Okay, in this video, I'm gonna add a loop to our beat, which is sounding good, but uh, I do tend to think that these sort of 100% program beats can be a little bit sterile sometimes. So that's why I like adding just one or two small loops and they're just gonna bring the whole thing really to life. Now I've got the Vengeance Minimal House Library here. It comes with little sort of add-on loops like this without a kick, without much of a snare either. So we can audition a few of them and see how they sound on top of our beat. Yeah, I like that one, that's cool. Let's try another one. Not bad either, but it's got a bit too much sort of bottom end in it. Let's try this one. Yeah. I like that. Let's grab this one and drag it onto the spare audio track we still got here at the top. Let's have a look at it. Ableton usually gets the warp thing right with these sort of shorter one or two bar loops. This one is looking good. Now this one here is 128 BPM originally and I do want to keep the original pitch so I set the warp to beats mode. By the way, always make sure that the high quality button here is switched on. Let's see how that sounds. Yeah, that's great. Now one thing with all these sample libraries such as Vengeance is that absolutely everybody is using them. But there's a fantastic function in Ableton and that's the slice to MIDI function. And we can use that to uh, manipulate this loop and change it around and make it into something quite different. Let me change to this view here so you can see better what's happening. You just uh, right click on the audio clip and select slice to new MIDI track. Keep it at uh, 16th note and hit OK. And now Ableton is creating a brand new drum rack here containing all the individual 16th slices of the new loop. You can now play that on your keyboard like this. Let me solo this track. And if I double click on the MIDI clip, you can see here all the individual slices. Now, because that's all MIDI now, we can uh, grab a few here and maybe pull these down, see how that sounds. But different already. Or let's say if you don't uh, want this sort of big height here at the front, you can delete it and grab a sort of smaller one here like this. Put it there at the front. Or you can uh, make a sort of gated effect by uh, making events shorter. Maybe we do these two too here. Now that sounds really good to me, but we can manipulate this loop even further if we go back to the drum rack containing the loop. Let me actually make this loop into a one bar clip, use the crop clip function and we can lose the original audio clip. And let me quickly pull down the volume. Now here, if we take a look at the drum rack again, what we could do for example is make this loop really stereo by grabbing each slice and panning them left to right like this so randomly and throwing each of the 16 slices around the stereo spectrum. That should sound really cool. Now we could take things even further then, um, have to switch back to session view for this. Uh, if you look at this little arrow here, you click on it and it shows you that there's actually an individual sub output for each of the slices in the mixer here. So uh, that's fantastic because uh, we could now here, for example, maybe add a reverb to this slice. Let me 
turn it up a bit. So in theory, you could insert a different effect on each of the 16 slices and the possibilities are just endless. <laughs> 